Welcome back. Chris Katarna is a best-selling author, a futurist, and he's a Canadian living in England. He has been coping with isolation in his own way, and he has perspectives on the lasting impacts of COVID-19, the change we may see. He's live with us from the UK, and welcome to you, Chris. Um, hi. Good, uh, good morning. <laughs> yeah, good morning. <laughs> we would like to end the show, Chris, uh, with, with kind of a look forward. And so, you know, Chris Hatfield, a former astronaut, talked about how this really is a shared experience people in so many parts of the world are having stuck inside their homes. Do you think it's going to bring us closer together or, or push us further apart? You know, it was really, um, oh, it was beautiful to, uh, to listen to Chris, uh, you know, share the experience of floating above the planet. And, uh, and, and having a shared experience as a planet. Um, because as a social scientist, I can't help but feel that we may never again see our own world as clearly as we can see it right now. Uh, and so it's just so important that we, we take a good look around um, and recognize some things that you know maybe weren't obvious before, but now are just blindingly obvious. Um, because so much I think about the positive ways that we can come out of this is going to come from our awareness in the present. Well, can I jump in on that, Chris? Because, uh, because, I mean, you call yourself someone who looks and envisages a better future. And right now, in the midst of all of the hardship and the pain and the uncertainty and the anxiety that so many are feeling, it's difficult to see a better future. How does it look to you? Well, uh, I mean, I think what we have is uh, a fabulous opportunity to see, um, see reality more clearly. Um, you know, and there are many of examples. I mean, just take the reality of work. I think we all connect much more clearly now to how so much unpaid labor makes work possible. <laughs> and so how much of our economy do we really measure? Uh, and how maybe should we change how we measure uh, what is productive activity? Um, that's, a, that's an exciting question we can be asking ourselves. Um, and another one that just seems to hit me in the face is, how we think about progress. You know, we live in a moment, we have this fetish for technology. Technology is what drives human progress um, and almost nothing else we seem to think. And now we live in this moment where we have this powerful personal proof, all of us, that, that you know, flattening the curve is a social achievement. It is a cultural achievement. It is something that can only be achieved that way. And technology couldn't help us with that. Yes, to help us recover, find a cure, but not, not deal with this problem. Um, and so it gives this this beautiful question to ask ourselves now, which is, you know, what are the other curves that we could be flattening? And we know that that's not just a nice sentiment anymore. We, we, we have a personal experience that is possible. I have so many friends who say they can't wait for life to get back to normal, new normal, whatever it looks like. They want to go back to see hockey games. They want to go back downtown to the office tower and see their work Break friends. Break up 2020 in Regina. <laughs> Man, that came out of nowhere. Um, Sorry. Do you, that's, well, that's okay. Um, do, you, do you think that we might be overstating it to think that society will be forever different in a fundamental way? Will we just revert to the kinds of lives that we, we had before and for many of us that we, we, we embraced before? So, Ian, I think that, I mean, that is the choice that we face right now. Um, I, think, I think what has become so clear is that we have become dangerously isolated as a, as a as a country, as a people, as a planet, one from the other. Um, and that isolation is, is socioeconomic gaps. It is age gaps. It is education gaps. It is, you know, social media, which has broken the, the shared experience of a broadcast into the personal experience of a news feed. Um, it is just how isolated we have become from one another by how, how full we pack our time. That there's no time left just to discover and meet other people. And now we come to this moment where we recognize that we depend upon the capacity to be and think and act social to face some of the greatest risks that we, we face now and we're going to continue to face. Uh, so where do we go to develop that capacity to be and think and act social? Where is the social mm -hmm. habitat where we develop it? And, and mm -hmm. we've been destroying that habitat in a lot of ways. Now I think the so the question and the opportunity is to come out of this saying, no, we are all going to continue to do what we have hungered to do and have started to do right now, which is to, 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 to cultivate um, that habitat all uh, right. for Chris, ourselves and, and for one another. 
let me jump in. We have lots of time to think about those things, to read your books. Best-selling author and futurist Chris Katarna joining us from the UK. Thank you. And thank you. As we think on values and how so much of life as we've known it, Ian, will change, has changed forever.